Hi, this is Sean Darrington, Senior Director of Product Management. And what I wanted to do today in this short how-to video is to show you how to configure a virtual IP address for a given one block's ring. Uh, that allows common access to the ring uh, that can have one or multiple one blocks in a given ring uh, without having to understand which exact one blocks each application or client will connect to. Uh, so with this, this is the dashboard view of my uh, one system instance here. And I'm just going to drill down into Exablox demo. And here I have a number of rings uh, in different locations and I have them named uh, different, uh, different things. Uh, I have a Paris and Chicago mesh configuration here. I also have a couple of uh, standalone New Hampshire, and I have a cluster here, uh, San Francisco cluster, as well as a Sydney cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and click into the Sydney cluster, and here you see I have three one blocks in my ring, and I have the dashboard overview of how much use space and free space I have, as well as a deduplication ratio. But what you can do here to configure virtual IP addresses on the left hand side, click on settings. And now within settings, you have the option to do a number of things within the ring. Number one, you can configure Active Directory or just be in a general work group uh, environment if you're an organization that, is, that does not use Active Directory to manage user groups and permissions. Uh, auto enrollment, uh, this is a, a key thing for one blocks that are automatically uh, going to enroll and join an existing ring if they are brought up on the same network. So you can actually turn this on or off depending upon how you want to manage the number of one blocks in a given ring. But I'm going to cancel that for now and actually show you the ring IP address. So here you can click on edit and from now you can make the determination of if you want the default uh, IP address, uh, which is that we broadcast over at NetBIOS as well as MDNS. Uh, this is how applications and clients can access the OneBlocks ring. Uh, you can continue to use this if you'd like to, but if sometimes organizations want to have a statically assigned uh, virtual IP address. Uh, this is a single IP address that all applications and users can continue to connect to, and they will get routed to the appropriate OneBlocks in a ring. This is particularly useful in NFS environments uh, or if you are an organization that has uh, a network that you need to provide access to users across multiple subnets and they can't resolve the one blocks ring by either NetBIOS and or MDNS. So here I'm just going to go ahead and put in my address 10.20.80-100. I know that this is actually a, uh, an IP address on my network that's not being used by other uh, uh, one blocks or other uh, clients in my network. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now I'm going to say that uh, it's going to ask me if I want to continue, uh, and this is actually just a, basically a resetting the network uh, on the one block's ring, so there's a brief interruption, um, but it's just a couple of seconds. You actually see here the net mask also, net mask of 255, 255, 255, 255. This is actually required for us to provide that virtual IP address to the given ring. So now that's all there is to configure the virtual IP address for the ring, and you can also go through and ensure here within each of your one blocks that you do want to make sure that you have either a static IP address uh, or a reserved DHCP address for each of your one blocks. Um, this is not what users and applications will connect to. They won't connect to the 10.20.80.113. They will actually connect to the virtual IP address for the given ring. And with that, that's as easy it is to configure a virtual IP address for your ring. Thanks for watching.